Hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you guys, can I get a thumbs up? Can you guys hear me? We're good? Hell yeah, look at that. What the heck is going on, everybody? Um, it's, uh, are we all here? Yeah, we got a huge team up here today because we had a lot of hands that took part in this project, and we are very freaking excited to, uh, explain what we did. I will say this, Brian's presentation is what we'd, we would call that, like, put together, right? And this is a lot more free form and organic, okay? So... You're going to see just smatterings of pictures on the screen. If it even works, it's going to be great. But we have more people. We do have a lot more people to do a lot more talking, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So, who here has actually played Foo Fighters? Yeah. Hell yes, let's go. Um, what a freaking honor this was. Um, I'm obviously very new to this industry as far as designing is concerned. Um, so being given the I'm going to stand up. Being given the opportunity to work on a project like this was quite an honor. Um, so yeah, a big shout out to Gary and George and all them for taking a chance on me. Uh, they gave me an amazing team. I'm sure you recognize a lot of faces up here. Um, but yeah, it, this was this was really cool. Um, I'm gonna go down the list here and just sort of point out some people that were instrumental in making this game freaking amazing. Uh, I'm Jack Danger, whatever. Uh, this is Tanyo Kleiss. Tanyo, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this guy. Um, Tanyo, uh, lead. It, is it, uh, it's so software lead, uh, I, f I get the terms mixed up, game developer. Um, so Tanyo, what, what's cool about Tanyo being on my first cornerstone was uh, Deadpool is one of my favorite pinball machines ever made. I, I, I hold that in very high regard. The art's amazing, the programming's amazing, the design's incredible, and the fact that I got to use, uh, or, I'm sorry, Tanyo on this. Ooh, I almost said Dwight because I was looking at him earlier. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's over here now. He's moving around. Uh, was It was quite an honor. So, uh, Tanyo, then also from Deadpool, we got Zombie Yeti here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> incredible, incredible artist. Um, <laughs> uh, so, like, just right off the rip, when they're like, this is your team, like, go make this game, I was already, like, I was already gassed up. Like, I, I knew whatever we were going to make, even if my part sucked, it was still going to look incredible and have an awesome rule set. Um, we've got Raymond Davidson, ladies and gentlemen. Ray Day. So, Ray Day's been, uh, so it, is it support? He's just software guy. He, anyway, he's been kicking ass for us, especially lately, uh, to help us put in a lot of cool shit uh, towards the end to get us to 1.0. He's been knocking some stuff out, and his brain for rules and like understanding how things should work is just phenomenal. Uh, thank you for touching the computer. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, our boy Bob Rosetto, right? Is it Rosetto? That's right. All right, Bob Rosetto here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so also an artist. He did a lot of uh, preliminary art stuff for us for the for the display. Um, Bob is an artist that I've been following on Instagram for as long as I can remember. Uh, I, I was an animator before all this, and I followed his work very closely, and I love it dearly, and to like have him on this project was freaking phenomenal. Um, and also, doing some really dope art and sketches and stuff like that is my boy Phil over here. So Phil, <laughs> Phil Gullet. Phil also knocking out a lot of cool art. Should I be like going through this shit while I'm, t oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to swear. Um, <laughs> Brian, Brian, can you come up and do this? Right yeah, right, please, Brian, you got you to do this. Uh, we'll get through the people that will let everybody talk. Um, so Phil did a lot of cool storyboarding for us. He actually drew a lot of the animations that you see on there that the, uh, the teams went in and animated. Um, that's myself, Tanya, and Satan there next to a sausage. Um, <laughs> if you've played the, the final battle that we just came out with in the game, you might recognize that if you had beaten it. Um, uh, let's see, Zach over here, my boy Zach Stark. <laughs> Zach, um, Zach did a lot of the user interface stuff for us. He plugged in all that stuff. You can see the stuff here. Again, we're going to go into this in detail. Uh, but he's the guy in there, like, making sure, like, this all makes sense on the screen. Like, we can understand what you're looking at, you know, track your progress. Are the animations playing the way they're supposed to? Um, and it, it all came together great. And then Tom Kizavad over here, folks. Tom, also, also, also an amazing artist. And uh, he should have been up here also for the Venom stuff. His art is freaking unreal. He did a lot of cool stuff, especially for the final battle. 
Uh, he drew and animated like all of that stuff with like the Fubak coming down and like the band in the hand and stuff like that. Stuff's amazing. Mark Renisi's, ladies and gentlemen, also. We have uh, uh, the, can we get, can I steal that microphone right there? The, the, the roving one? So we have, okay. Does this one, oh, this one sounds better. Can I use this one? All right, screw this. Here's what I'm going to do. Let, let's start from the beginning here. All right, so we're going we're gonna to talk about Foo Fighters. I'm going to sit down because this is, this is uncomfortable. So um, I am not the first designer on this game, okay? This game uh, was a project that they started before I came in, and then it was given to me to uh, start from scratch and knock this out. Uh, there had been meetings with Foo Fighters um, beforehand, and then when they presented it to me, they're like, we want you to just take this to a place where you think this would be cool. And uh, I, I love music games. You know, uh, ACDC was my favorite pinball machine to show people how to play pinball on. Um, but I, I wanted to treat this a little differently. And knowing that we had, like, the brain of uh, Zombie Yeti here, we just wanted to treat this a little differently than um, just sort of like, you know, you're playing music videos on screen and you're just listening to the music and you're just, like, hitting shots to progress that music. So um, this is called a mood board. This is sort of when I had ideas of what I wanted the art to sort of feel like, I throw this stuff together. This comes from, like, my animation background of just, like, just a vibe that I'm thinking of put this together, I threw it at Jeremy already knowing like he has done some really cool stuff for Foo Fighters. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, my dude. Oh. I'm parched. <laughs> anyway, um, no. Uh, no, uh, yeah, so, so uh, Foo Fighters had started, uh, yeah, like he said, before he got there. <laughs> That's a perfect water. Um, uh, and um, I had actually worked with the band over the years kind of knowing what was going on. I knew it was potentially possible. I knew management was seeking out. They kind of wanted to do a game. And so uh, as I was working on uh, gig posters uh, over the years for them, I kind of had some seeds and ideas I was playing with. Um, uh, and then once Jack uh, came in and Jack, Tanya, and I all sat down and we started uh, discussing it, um, I sort of you know, I had a head start a little bit. So I was, I, it was a lot easier for me to go ahead and kind of take this idea. I'd created this character that essentially was a very poorly disguised alien, uh, you know, from the Roswell incident that happened to, you know, kind of just be around. And I, I, thought, I thought it was funny. I thought it was dumb and funny at the <laughs> same time. And, uh, and I had actually started to create a little bit of a story behind it. And then I started pitching ideas to these two, and uh, these two knuckleheads would uh, just encourage me. And so they made it very easy um, to continue to go a direction, flesh that out. Um, and every idea I thought was stupid, they didn't. Uh, and I thought, well, either they're the stupid ones, mm -hmm. or, um, or maybe we'll just keep going. <laughs> and uh, it'll be easy. No, um, but uh, yeah, it was th that's the short of it. I, I, I had a relationship with the band going into it, and that helped a little bit. Heck yeah. H heck yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the, uh, after some back and forth and seeing this, we knew we wanted to treat this a little differently. So there was this, hey, <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth thank you for the water. Um, Everyone standing ovation for Elizabeth. <laughs> Um, yeah, we knew we wanted to take it down this uh, Saturday morning cartoon angle, um, and that's that's what led us into uh, or like jumping right into some of these cool sketches. So we knew based off of um, some of the feedback they gave us, the preliminary idea they had was they wanted it to be about them in a van traveling the country, uh, you know, going around playing music, and that was that was kind of the gist of it, right? Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'll, say, I'll add to that was uh, Dave, they, uh, Stern had sent Dave a Stranger Things game. So, like, his only uh, frame of reference was constantly going, like, well, I was thinking, like, and, and then it'll be, like, you know, like, the upside down. And then it's, like, the upside down. Like, maybe we'll do something different. Uh, but once, <laughs> once we got going, that, that changed. We got going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So there's no, there's no upside down in this game. There isn't, but there is a. Uh, is this working? 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. So yeah, there is alien abduction though. The, so yeah. part of it, yeah. yeah. In the in the, we did get to have a, a Zoom call with with Dave Grohl and and he really yeah he wanted to be about the van. He had done the um he done the what drives this documentary which was about the awesomeness of being in a, a rock and roll band yeah. traveling across the country, but also capturing like late at night. It's like two a.m. You're driving across the desert and you're listening to late night radio and then you see something in the sky, like what was that? You know something in the sky. Um, so that and that definitely ties into the Foo Fighters theme to their their name. So we we took that and took the character that 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 Jeremy started here and and turned him into like this 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 adversary for you know the the bad guy in our game. So that he, and he was always he's always there. We we wanted to instead of instead of just a music uh, like just focusing on the different lyrics and the songs and song titles, we wanted lots of story and and uh, so. That's what we got. We, we, you know, a bunch of guys uh, get into a van, an a action van, traveling like, sort of like the A team meets like some sort of mystery uh, RV uh, team of people solving mysteries and and going across. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for being general. Yeah, without thank you for dog. being general. Um, yeah, no. The only thing I, the only thing I'd add to that um, uh, is is just the fact that you know we, we really wanted it to be like this sort of road trip kind of scenario um, and once we once we kind of decided that was the case then we you know Tanya in particular uh, was able to kind of start structuring a storyline about what does that mean like you know because we kind of pitched the idea like hey okay you're kind of this character just keeps popping up at different concerts he's kind of like a maybe an obsessive fan or something right and then it just sort of okay no he's more than that and it kept going and it kept going and escalating uh, to the point where, you know, it turned out the way it did. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, Jeremy set off just sort of like getting an idea of uh, what he wanted the band to look like. You could see some uh, preliminary images here of like just some turnarounds of the band. Um, trying to understand, we, we had this idea of like the, the van would like upgrade to different, like the wheels would get stronger or maybe there's like a gun on it or some other stuff and he would drew like different iterations over there on the side. And um, randomly, he drew this robot that he called the Grobot here. And uh, he, he thought, he's like, just look at this stupid thing we did. And Tanya and I were just like, this is the coolest fucking thing I've it, ever seen. It's got to be so, in the game. So hold on. It, they, I did it. Uh, it was not actually on a page with everything here. I did it separately. I did it literally uh, for one laugh in a meeting. Uh, I thought it would be funny. <laughs> and these guys are like, that's a great idea. And I'm that's like, awesome. of course. <laughs> <laughs> Love that stuff. Never present anything you don't want to be in a project. That's that's a, a lesson to take away from this. Um, so yeah, the the Foo Fighters van here. You could see some more sketches. We're trying to. This is where we got a better idea of like what we wanted the van to look like when it's like in its base form, or when it's like upgraded with like this like alien technology mixed with their own like sort of rock technology. And you also see some preliminary sketches of like the reformatted, which are like the mind-controlled people that the Overlord has taken over with his music, um, sort of like the little bots that are also on the Overlord's team there. Um, here's a really cool like turnaround of the Overlord, his like cheap uh, Halloween mask that he wears to disguise his face. Yeah, uh, so I'm very, <clears throat> I'm very young. No, I'm very old. And uh, I grew up back when uh, there were only three channels on TV. No, no. Uh, there were cartoons on Saturday morning, and we all grew up with that, and we all loved it. And uh, the one thing that we learned in the 80s is skulls equal bad guys. Yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> um, here's another cool sketch of how Jeremy envisioned, like, the van would sort of, like, transform and unfold to create, like, a stage. You'll see this a lot in the, uh, the Chicago opening of the game. Um, we got a little blister pack there. And here's that cool heckin' Foobot that we had to eventually name it Foobot. They were into the idea of the giant robot. They just wanted to make sure the whole band was represented. So instead of Grolbot, it's Foobot. And then leaning heavily on that sort of like Saturday morning cartoon slash toy vibe, we made it look like an action figure that the Overlord's holding that blister pack. And on the back, it's like collect all the parts of the Foobot. You know, you'd buy your Dave Grohl and like the Foobot head would come with it and stuff. So this is also uh, a rule that we put in there, like as you're doing well, you're going to collect those parts that lead to an eventual multi ball. Um, here's some colorway stuff that you were making sure we understood that you really loved old Superman toys. Superpowers. Sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, but yes, <laughs> uh, yes. 
That is Lex Luthor, uh, circa probably, I don't know, like 88? 87, anyone know? Um, and uh, I literally ripped off the color scheme. Yeah. I stole it. Yep. I've never done this before. Don't sue us. <laughs> but, but I was like, this is literally, this is what evil things look like because when I was eight, that's what evil things looked like. One-to-one, -one, purple, green, and skulls. Absolutely. Nailed it. And so uh, after he drew these preliminaries and like we really nailed down what we wanted, these are some of the uh, 3D printed sculpts that we had made. Um, painted them and just wanted to like get an idea of like space claim like we were very adamant that the colors had to match the van from the the documentary so you could see we're actually like there with Pantone chips to make sure like it was on point like the door on the other side being a different color and stuff uh, obviously the overlord has to be green um, so let's hand this over to the animators really quick especially well also Jeremy if you want to have a hand in that microphone but here you could see um, they put together, you know, I'll just let you talk. Who wants to talk about this? Me? You do that. Yeah, go for <laughs> it, Bob. You got this, baby. All right, bring it on. Um, yeah, so I guess by the time I was brought on this project, um, Jeremy and Phil had done a lot of the preliminary stuff, um, a lot of the legwork, setting up just how everything looks. So I was pulling inspiration from stuff that had been drawn already. And... Um, when we're talking about doing like seconds of animation, uh, I don't even know how much is actually in the game in total. Over an hour. There you go. Over an, an hour. hour. Over an hour of like <coughs> yeah, actual animation in the thing. So you have to economize everything. Everything's got to be like pretty pretty streamlined, and I think that's what this kind of represents. Uh, problem solving a lot of these, um, the visuals for the band members, and just kind of making up a, a model sheet of sorts for everybody to kind of follow. Um, you know, colors and, um, you know, line thicknesses and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, what's cool also is, like, in a way to, like, keep them simple for the animators, but to still have an idea of, like, the little things that really make that character that character. Like, if you yeah. look at Pat Smear's bridge on his nose. Exactly. Like, if you don't have that, he might just look like random person X, but that little tiny detail yeah. really makes sure it, it looks like him. Yeah, Taylor's eyebrows are a little bit smaller and, you know, the shapes of these guys' beards and stuff, length of their hair and everything. Um, trying to trying to consider all of that and like, okay, this is what the guy's going to look like all throughout the game. I was referred to that all the way through my work, and then I got uh, this closer production map. Thanks. Heck yeah. Um, uh, again, here's uh, me, Satan, and Tanya. So these are some cool sketches that uh, Phil Phil put together. Phil, you drew these, yeah? Oh, the middle one's Tom Kizavat. Yeah, he drew the one that looks like somebody. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know, that sausage looks lo a lot like me. Um, so, yeah, we have a, it, if you're playing the game, is it, um, I'm, I'm having a brain fart. So there will be a moment where uh, you're seeing the reformatted and you're like rocking them out and you're like saving them and then they transform into like who they were before they were reformatted. This is a good representation here on the left of like reformatted person on the bottom who's like doing their marching and then the kid celebrating after he's been saved by rock and roll. They're freeing people's minds, right? Yeah. Right, Jeremy? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the uh, Chicago <laughs> mode. They're high voltage rock, obviously. <laughs> Cohesive storyline. Here we go. All right. Now, ignore the Star Tunes part on the top there. These were just some cool uh, frames we had. Um, but Phil set about to uh, storyboard. If you'll remember when this game first was teased, we had an animation that we showed of, like, the Overlord in a spaceship targeting the Earth, hitting a button, zooming in, and then, you know, you're in the Foo Fighters headquarters. The alarm's going off. They're hopping in the van. All of this stuff was storyboarded out long before we animated it, obviously. And it, this was a really cool way for us to understand like the vibe and the energy and the movement we wanted out of this but also a great way to like put this in front of the Foo Fighters for them to go like oh heck yeah like so they also anytime we sent something to the Foo Fighters they they said the word fuck like every other word they're like fuck yeah this is fucking awesome I fucking love this uh, and they didn't turn in like hardly anything down like anytime we'd bring something new they're like yes this has to be in the game uh, and this was no exception showing them this really cool animatic only one note to that is the fact they use the F word so many times that Jack stopped using it. Right, because I, 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 I didn't I didn't I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre. Um, do you guys beep these recordings when you're done? No, okay, hey, yo, internet, I am sorry. Okay, here we go. 
Um, now the internet knows the F word. Good job. <laughs> Um, all right, well, moving forward. Um, here's some more cool animatics of like some scenes of the uh, the reformatted just sort of like doing the robotic movements in the windows. We've got a cool Sasquatch they have to scene. Dance in unison because their minds are. Of course, yeah. they're all in time. Excellent. Sasquatch approves. Um, here's some really cool screens for uh, some of the stuff we used in the game. Um, I don't know if you have seen the, the movie Studio 666, the Foo Fighters movie they came out with. So at one point in that movie, they do something called the Pearl Jam High Five, where they, uh, they all just stand up, they high five together. What's that album cover called? Ten. Ten. There you go. Man, you guys, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, anyway. Um, so our skill shot, we wanted like all their hands eventually coming up because it's like a six-way skill shot, and you eventually get them all high-fiving. Um, you can see Rami's council there in the bottom. Uh, we got like the, the overlords sort of... Uh, what would you call that? His den? Bedroom. His yeah. bedroom. There you go. And that thing on the bottom right we're not going to talk about uh, for a while. But uh, it's cool looking. Sure is. And it's going to be cool when, it, when, it's, uh, when it's in the game. Um, all right. So uh, let, I'm going to pass this over to Zach Stark a little bit because this is his uh, area of expertise. Um, is coming up with like this really cool user interface that we had. And um, just sort of the different takes we took on like... Uh, you know, like our our display, our score display isn't the standard display. You know, we went with like that alphanumerical layout um, and just some different stuff like that. So, Zach, you want to tell us everything that's cool about this? Absolutely. What was nice about what stood out to me with this project, um, first of all, having Phil, Bob, Tom, these guys, uh, pretty much all they did was write things down. Um, <clears throat> but also Jack being like from a visual background, as we were making these things, he's, and we're, and we're like just sort of spitballing back and forth, he's able to like describe things in a visual way that like actually works, like that I can actually use as direction. And yeah, we made like the, the, the map for uh, ultimately like the, the storyline of the game. You're going to these different places and, and collecting parts along the way. <coughs> Uh, but the be I, I pretty much just wrote things down. Uh, it was these guys. It was uh, the uh, and on the previous screen, most of that was Mimi Ernst, I think. Yeah. And uh, the hand, the high fives is a. I think that's Olivia Moon. Um, bottom right is Phil. Top right is uh, I think that's also Mimi. But the team was f so good that I, I it, if I were to touch anything, it would be a downgrade. <laughs> I, I pretty much just wrote things down exactly. I let the I, I gave the tasks to the people who who are best who are better than me. He's selling him short, selling himself short a little bit. Uh, he had to go and name and make sure each of those corners and paths possible for the little combotron had the right names in the right orders, the right colors, and so me and him would work together, you know, to coordinate that. And just everything you see on the screen has to be programmed and named the right way, and and it has to work and has to have the right timelines to move so he did all that so that's zach word true true that <laughs> Heck yeah. word yeah without without all that organization definitely like uh there's like if it one instance name is off that could break the whole freaking screen and then who knows where the game is going to go from there so like there's a there's a lot of uh security in knowing that zach knew what the heck he was doing uh to make sure this thing was all held together i totally knew what i was doing <laughs> you nailed it bro I wish we could zoom in on this. I don't. Know, I don't understand computers. Uh, I'm So I'm also. This is also my work computer. So I'm really afraid of like clicking stuff. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure you guys would love me to click around in here. But um, so Tanya, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? Certainly. So um, this is uh, this is our our, our project whiteboard. Um, and it's, it's uh, something I learned from uh, Mr. Dwight Sullivan, which is this cool whiteboard tool called uh, Lucid Spark. Lucid Spark. Um, it's, it's a really neat tool. Anyway, um, so in here, we, I, I, we threw uh, like all the ideas, and we threw a bunch of Jeremy's artwork in here. And, and sort of it's sort of a place to go, like a central place to go for the team to sort of dive into different pieces of the overall design and the visual stuff. Um, and you'll, you can see. I don't know if you can see the mouse here, but in this upper area, you'll, if you zoomed in, you'd see this 
it, it's basically a, a virtual version of this thing we used to have on the wall at the, the old, uh, when, like when we were working on Turtles, we had this huge thing where we just have sticky notes on the wall and, and the tasks, everything was broken down into uh, just like individual tasks and, and, and would move across from different stages from like, what the heck is this? To like, okay, this is well enough defined, we're going to storyboard it. And then um, it was a pretty, um, as Zach was saying, he was saying he just writes things down. He actually, there was a lot to write down, uh, lots and lots of details. In There's also project. still something I have to work on apparently on the left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know That's what That's why we left it there, just to. <laughs> Yeah, it's like us. Yeah, that's uh, those are all right. So, um, uh, what else we got in here? Um, anyway, um, but yeah, th this project was a lot of fun because we we had the opportunity to since we decided we wanted to make up a story and we sort of wanted to make up a you know like a fictional Saturday morning cartoon. Um, there was a lot involved in doing that. Like uh, like we we have a number of different writers on the project. Um, and and concepting out like what happens, what the structure is, what's what cities cities they're going to go to, what happens in each city. Um, so, and each one of those was broken up. Uh, we wrote out what what sort of the sequence of events where each of these little city stories was, and then handed that to Phil, and then Phil took that and really just fleshed it out into into something that was really visually uh, humorous and and exciting to watch. And and, and like it's I, have, I have a good time just watching the. Just watching the you know people play and watching the um, watching the screen. Yeah. It's uh yeah it's cool. It is cool. It is cool. Um, all right. Uh, let, let's. Do, I'm not going to show much of this because I'm a ding dong. But like I I burnt myself a lot and I cut myself a lot making this game because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, and it, this was definitely like a trial by fire thing. It's like you know there's people I could ask questions to, but like really it's just sort of like. Go make a ball guide. You'll figure it out. Like, bend some metal. I learned how to use this welder after hurting myself a couple of times. Um, I used a lot, a lot, a lot of painter's tape in making this game. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is honestly great for holding shit down. Um, uh, I would use, like, cardstock, tape it down. You could throw a ball at it. It actually held up pretty well. Um, and I actually designed this game and the game before it, and if I'm making another game, that game too, um, in uh, a program called Visual Pinball where I would make it virtually, digitally, play it, transfer that into CAD, CAD back to digital, play a little bit, then eventually print out the CAD and like start working from there. Uh, had a, a lot of great help from, oh, I just realized we don't have uh, Eddie Hicks, the engineer who helped me put this beautiful game together. Is Eddie here? Eddie? He was? Oh, what a, he was here in the last one? No shot. Okay. Um, wow. Okay, rude. Uh, Eddie helped me uh, sort through a lot of stuff on here, because um, especially, like, we have, like, crossover shots that are typically sort of a no-no in pinball, uh, just because it's hard to get them right and dialed in, especially if a game's on location and leaning and stuff like that. And uh, he sat with me through all my tantrums to, like, figure it all out. It was incredible, uh, and we made it through. But let's move on to more of the fun stuff here. So this is when we took a printout of the CAD. We went to my studio. Tanya came over for breakfast. We got some coffee. He brought over a bunch of fun markers and post-it notes. And uh, did you have any uh, hand sanitizer? Though? <laughs> oh, you mean this giant freaking bottle here? Listen, uh, I I didn't spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Tanya yet, so I wasn't sure how gross he was going to be. And this this <laughs> this was great. <laughs> I love you, brother. Yeah, thanks for wiping your hands off me. Um, but yeah, he just showed up with a bunch of post-it notes, a big baggy of inserts, and we just sat down going like, okay, what does this look like? And we just started drawing inserts and trying to conceptualize like, well, we have this many songs. What's actually going to be a playable mode? What's something we want to reserve for like a wizard mode? What's that progression look like? And so we just started writing notes. And uh, yeah, you want to talk a little bit about that? I think you did. Uh, I really like sticky notes a lot. They're yeah. they're 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 a staple of my process. Um, they're like painters tape for Jack. <laughs> they're like just like he likes the painters tape. I like the sticky notes. I mean, you can they, they'll hold things down too. Um, and, but you notice he he's got to bring his painters tape. He's uh, ups, ups oh, it is there. yeah, there it is. It's always there. But um, yeah, this was uh, basically we took we we brainstormed a lot with with Jeremy and with everybody. Um, got all these ideas in a big pile, and then you take the pile and you put the things on the sticky notes, and then you sort it out and um, and sort of smear it all over the playfield until it w makes sense. 
Uh, but yeah, um, this this is yeah this is a really fun part of the project. Um, and also like laying out the inserts. This, this turned out to be a really great way to to lay out inserts. Is you get a bunch of inserts and you put them down on the paper, um, and then you know we do something. And it's like oh I don't like that, and we'd move it around, and it makes it pretty easy to change things. You just just move them. to something else you know um go for it you do great <laughs> okay well this um this uh what this says is that playfield plus video equals light show um oh, okay. and this is actually something we, so we have a light tool uh that uh we can load up the the the, uh, the cad file and, and then do different types of light sweeps and we can also do this thing where we you play a video and and like if you have rgb lights and so a lot of the expression light shows, uh, like on, on, the, on the LE, and if you have the premium and you get the light kit, you'll see, you'll notice like this particular ball save animation, as the van comes in, you'll, you'll sort of see this ambient color go across that looks, that sort of, that is the same video, it's just a, you know, a very low resolution. This is something that Mark Renisi's here worked on quite a bit, um, and uh, you want to talk about it at all? No. Okay, <laughs> he doesn't want to talk, he, he refuses to talk about it. The future. future. Anyway, this is Mark. He's Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, I came on late to the project because I, I usually work, as uh, one, as Paul described in, in the previous pro, uh, presentation, our schedule kind of overlaps. So a lot of the core ar uh, team artists kind of jump from one, one game to another. So I usually jump on, on the latter half of the game. So I get a lot of the uh, miscellaneous loose ends, like like the light show, or other extra ball effects, or things like that. And the combo, the band member combo the effects. Band member combo, the, the little. Uh, I worked on the little ball save. Uh, what was it called? The the overdrive. Overdrive. Yeah, yeah, overdrive. Yeah. Overdrive save animation. Right. So I, I get I get a lot of that stuff that that usually doesn't get storyboarded. So the assignment from Zach usually just make it look cool so I, that's what i do just they hand me stuff and i try to make it look cool and you succeed you do yeah you do a great job great job Mark. um here we could see just uh taking one of our first whitewoods and um th this is a good representation of this is probably like whitewood two, i would imagine um the insert pattern isn't exactly correct but this is us like sort of drawing on it to understand like maybe if we want to tweak s where some stuff would go or maybe understanding a little bit better like where we want to focus on some art and stuff like that um what's great about uh this is if you take if you're ever building a pinball machine out there in the world internet if you're using a uh what's it called a, a freaking uh yeah but what's the sharpie you could wipe a wipey sharpie. If you use a wipey sharpie, you can wipe it away. It's really great. And if it doesn't wipe off, what's that? Oh, uh, dry erase, my man. A dry erase marker. Uh, if you do have to actually use just regular sharpie, hand sanitizer does get rid of that too. It's a fun little fun little trick there. <laughs> Guy, I'm new. Leave me alone. Um, so uh, we'll move on to some little toys here. So uh, we obviously, much like Brian and Dwight mentioned, uh, we focused on the, the premium when we were designing the game. And then you have to understand sort of like what's going to come out for the pro. And I knew like the sculpts and stuff weren't going to make it, but I still wanted to keep like some fun dimension in those areas like Area 51 and uh, like the, the Overlord area and stuff like that. So um, I actually went about like building weird little plastic stacks that turned out to be pretty cool, and Jeremy threw his art all over them, and um, they did the thing. Yeah, no, uh, this was very helpful. But I had no idea what I was supposed to do. <laughs> and here they are. Um, and here's another one where I just drew on some cardstock and threw it up there, and the ball goes through it, and it was pretty fun. There was going to be this little dude that popped up, but that it was stupid. It was stupid. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Oh, J is Jerry here? Jerry Thompson, are you still in the thing? Man, uh, he is here? I saw him leave with Eddie. Why, you <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, so Jerry definitely helped us uh, a lot with recording some VO for this. Um, the gentleman who's in the bottom right there, that's Brian Headley. He is actually the voice of the roadie in the game. Uh, and what's awesome about his voice is he was not acting. That was literally his voice. 
It was just him talking. It's freaking awesome. And it's actually like if you ever get to meet him randomly in the Seattle area, it's kind of creepy knowing his name and his voice from the game. When he starts talking, he sounds like he's like making fun of you or something because like it's like he's like in character, but it's just him chilling, being being that dude. Um, let's talk about some play field art. <laughs> I'm good at throwing things over to people. I don't know what to say. Talk about the art. Yeah. So uh, all I knew was uh, um, we 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 sort of had some anchors in place, um, and I knew that there were a few things that I wanted to do differently. I really liked uh, supporting uh, shot paths as much as possible. And the one thing that I really liked about uh, Jack's uh, layout was the crossovers. Um, and so, you know, those those became a lot of sort of the, the uh, I guess, the more literal uh, uh, road trip pathways. Um, and, and that type of stuff, um, you know, it, it, uh, you kind of focus on the things you know, and then everything else you sort of start filling in and hope you're making, uh, uh, you know, supporting good choices. And in this case, uh, the band down at the bottom, um, I knew I really wanted those guys uh, to stand out uh, quite a bit, and um, uh, so I used the least <laughs> amount of colors, uh, um, believe it or not. Um, I think there may only be, like, I don't know, four or five colors there. So maybe a few shades or tones, wow. but but um, but yeah, it was it was a great opportunity. Um, I was just trying to support the game these guys were designing. That's it. That's all you did. Great yeah. job. No, it looks freaking awesome, dude. Um, oh, here's some cabinet art. It is. Talk about it. <laughs> this is cabinet art. The stuff I said about the playfield goes here too. Damn it. Okay. Same stuff. <laughs> Uh, no, li listen. There's a th <laughs> there's a lot of things I could talk about, but but I won't because it's boring. But I did uh, think, you know, we we're talking about this whole concept of it being, you know, a Saturday a fictionalized Saturday Saturday morning cartoon, and the fact that you know we've got a a rock band and and we wanted to do something different. And uh, I, I at one point I said, well, um, you know, obviously we have the giant Fubot. Um, I broke, by the way, I broke model here. Scale-wise, this makes zero sense. But uh, I wanted the band to be playing on a flying fist uh, because I thought, well, that's kind of rock and roll or something, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of funny. Um, and, uh, and so that's it. <laughs> that's absolutely it. Cool, cool fist. It was that simple. <laughs> We're out of slides, bro. Um, hey, so uh, R Raymond, how's it going, Ray? Yo. How you doing? Good. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so R Raymond came on to, uh, he, he's been helping us immensely uh, get to the 1.0 finish line um, and like uh, getting the final battle in, um, making it a challenge mode, those types of things. Uh, he's been very instrumental in uh, getting those things together. Um, he's been doing a lot of really cool stuff with us and he is doing a hell of a lot more to get us to 1.0, and there's a lot of cool, uh, I'm not going to swear, stuff on the way, but I'm going to let both of you talk about it. Yeah, well, yeah, Ray, Ray's been on the project since pretty much as soon as we had a white wood yeah. going um, and been very instrumental in, in the really fleshing the rules out. Now you speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, it's a great collaboration between me, Tanya, and Jack. We kind of, like, I'll maybe do my first pass at something and then they'll give feedback on it and, and we'll kind of come meet in the middle of like, oh, yeah, I like this idea, but maybe it needs to be a little different in this way or something. And I'm like, well, what if then I'll like counter propose like, well, we could do this. And they're like, oh, yeah, try that. And we'll try that. And so it's been really cool finding just kind of dialing in um, the different rules like. The FUBOT, you know, how hard should it be to see FUBOT multiball? How hard should each part be? You know, we try different things. Should the parts go away when you drain? Should they stay? And, uh, you know, I came up with, like, well, you, how about you keep the part, but you lose the double scoring, you know, that kind of thing. So a lot of compromises, a lot of cool meeting in the middles um, happening. Uh, it's been a blast to work on this project. Um, and, yeah, sometimes it'll just be like, okay, Ray, you're doing the entire final battle. Here's all the videos. Go. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you know, I'll sit there and I'll have to think of the different, well, I could do this, I could do that, and then start doing that. Is it fun? Okay, that was not as fun as it sounded in my head. Let me maybe, you know, sometimes it's as simple as changing uh, 
you know, instead of having these shots lit, have these ones, or instead of two shots, maybe you have to do three, or instead of this many points, maybe it's multiply, that's more fun, you know, just all these little things, and then also getting the UI to match, uh, you know, like when you're facing the overlord and you have the health bars appear, you know, we didn't have anything for that, so I just asked, uh, was it Zach? Yeah, and yeah. yeah, I'm just like, yo, Zach, I need something cool. And he's like, I got, I got you. So it's just been a lot of that, just kind of dialing in things. And um, and then also anytime I see the game on stream or I play it in a tournament or I see it in a tournament, I'm always taking notes, you know, seeing what, uh, what people are doing. You know, oh, they didn't really get rewarded for that as much as I hoped they would. You know, maybe I need to increase that. Or, oh, people aren't going for that at all. Maybe I need to make it more obvious, um, you know, make it more prominent, make people care about it. Um, just all those sort of things. Or if I have a cool idea, like, hey, maybe after you lock a ball, you could get a skill shot attempt again. And then I just kind of put that in there and see how that goes. And we dial that in. And just, yeah, it's just been a blast. Heck yeah. Th I would say the, the one thing, like, day one on the project, all of us thinking about the rules, the one thing that really had us scratching our heads the most was all of us sort of having our own take on how we wanted to treat those drop targets. And then Ray would propose something, and I would propose something, and Tony would pro propose something, and then we'd be like, okay, that makes sense. Let's move on to something else, and then come back to it like a month later and be like, what yeah. the frick did we decide on? And yeah. then go through it all again, come up with something that was completely different, be like, that's probably good. Leave, come back to it, completely forget again. Uh, but it turned out to be one of my, one of my uh, favorite parts of that game is like progressing and building up the way you change how you play that that mode and uh yeah it's been a lot of fun cool yeah. oh here you want the mic yeah and then um yeah tanyo is more of the the big vision you know he was the one at jack's place early on figuring out inserts and modes and where to put songs i just kind of fill in the gaps and the you know the low implementation and helping with things so tanyo what do you what do you do <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know yeah um yeah, like Raymond said, um, I created a lot of gaps for, for everybody to <laughs> for everybody to fill in. I mean, sort of the structure, uh, I mean, both the story structure and the rule structure. I mean, actually, Jack and 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 myself and Ray, um, just basically kind of helping drive the whole ship. Um, we really wanted it to be a collaborative effort, sort of like like a, bu a big team of people coming together, like like as if they were building a giant robot. Yeah. yeah, like coming, exactly. forming, you know, all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, basically we, we, we created the structure, a story structure and a rule structure, and then really depended on all these team members to fill in details. And, and it, it was, um, you know, I don't know, it really worked out. Like, you know, people come to me like, oh, what do you want here? And, and I was like, uh, I wrote it down, and it's like a couple words, and they're like, <laughs> it's like, no, just think about it. And then they're like, oh, you meant this, right? And um, so, I mean, a lot of ideas came out of every one of these people, um, like out of Phil's head and Bob's head and Ray's oh head. Yeah. And, well and it, would usually, it would usually come down to Zach. So what I was saying earlier, would usually these guys' ideas would kind of filter down to Zach, and then Zach would just kind of come to the artist and say, make it look cool. <laughs> and they and did. Just trying to make it look cool. Yeah, I so. Just make it look cool. Just make it look cool. Like this presentation, everything's just freaking. <laughs> yeah. It's my responsibility. Well, what was nice is it, it was like free, free form. You yeah, know, yeah. half most of the time it was just whatever cool thing you could come up with, yeah. share it with the group, and and throw it up there. There was no, at least yeah. on my end, I didn't get any of those fancy storyboards. <laughs> it was just make it look cool. Make it look know? cool. Um, and I mean that's sort of the direction we got it from. From the, the the band also yeah. from the was like oh that's fucking cool that, that was you know it, yeah, yeah. They, there, um, there was like they just if w it was cool they didn't really give a crap they just wanted it to be on there and that was it well I knew yeah we knew they like cartoons and they like rock and roll and they like the robots I just I don't know everything kind of clicked like the team clicked um, it's it's uh, it's it, it's been a blast yeah Heck yeah. Well, I, I'm going to open the floor up to questions if anyone has any questions. Nobody? All right. Well, it's been... Um, Thanks a let lot. <laughs> let's start over here. Uh, is there a topic for me? Well, you guys Who else has a question? Does anyone else? You're yeah, not, you're not yeah gonna there's toppers the on all... Oh, there's toppers on all of our games. Yes, that is... Uh, there, y there's a topper planned. That, that, cool. Yeah. 
And it's it, and it's what? It's fucking cool. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's actually really cool. What's up? No comment. Oh, yeah, Holden Poison wasn't taken out. It was just, it. it is still in the list, right? Oh, it is Everything selectable. is selectable. So, yeah, here's a, a, pro, a pro tip is, um, yeah, in, in, the menu, in the song select screen, if you just keep on going down and down and down, it switches to a new page. And there's like, so you can select all. Every song in the game is selectable at the beginning now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a secret. Yeah. Don't tell anybody, but, yeah, but it's there. So you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I it came out in 9.7, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because 9.8 was the one that just came out, and it was in there before that. Yeah, it's totally in there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we need a UI fix there, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe we need a, you know. I blame Zach. Zach, that, that's, what, that's what the little sticky note was on the chart. <laughs> 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 like, make it clear that there's a whole other page of songs. But yeah, actually all the songs in the game are selectable at the beginning. Yep. That's probably a better question for Jeff. Oh, you weren't asking me. Okay. Th th thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Um, when when I was just building uh, pinball machines by myself in my studio and on stream, that is something I came up with on my homebrew, and uh, I was able to bring over to this game, and it worked great, and I'm really excited that it is on a production pinball machine. It's awesome. You. Yeah, you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we only had the rights to Van Hagar, right? Yeah. 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 Sorry. I my apologies. Uh yeah, what's up? I have Woo! Love you. So that I keep both flippers under maximum power so if you need to crank that up uh you have several degrees of strength you can lift that up to make it up there if you need to in yep in the settings yep Ooh, great question you want to talk about insider <laughs> yeah insider. Okay. what do you do with insider by the way oh stuff um yeah it's a <laughs> Game side technology. Um, so uh, yeah, in Foo Fighters, uh, the, the uh, we we mostly have focused on the the quests. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess everything we're doing is 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 uh, in the future. And can't really talk much about it. But um, yeah, Insider connected. I think Venom is the thing that really took. Uh, I mean, he, the Dwight and the team took uh, the Insider connected to the next level. And I, I think we're going to keep on seeing more next levels happening. You're asking if I get grumpy? <laughs> <laughs> like, no more ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th there's enough. I mean, th there's usually have a big pile of ideas, and then you sort through them, and then there's a pile over here that is, is safe for later. Yep. The, also, mechanically, there are several things that I tried on here that I was just like, no, it's going to freaking work. And it wouldn't work. And it, uh, I would try, and I would try, and it just didn't make sense. It wasn't reliable. Maybe it didn't shoot right. Maybe it just looked stupid. Or it just was stupid. I got a lot of stupid stuff that I tried in the creation of this game. Um, there's only like one major thing that we tried to put on here that didn't work. And it just looked stupid. It was really stupid. I'm not even going to tell you what it was, but it was stupid. So It was a giant bottle of hand sanitizer. <laughs> should have photoshopped that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's a big part of what makes the, you know, the, the games great is the opportunity to try lots of things and, and whittle it down and edit and edit and try and, 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 and iterate until the thing is polished and as good as we can make it. Heck yeah. Who wants to talk about that? I do. So they we said they thought I did really well. <laughs> Everything else was okay. <laughs> 
They ca they congratulated Jeremy for sure. Uh, they told me my part sucked. Um, no, we uh, we made an individual game for each band member. They got their own custom plaque, and uh, they all reported back that they're all playing the crap out of it. Um, and their kids are just absolutely destroying the thing, which is freaking awesome. And whenever we have an opportunity to go, uh, like, be with the Foo Fighters, like, at a concert or something like that, we also supply them with games backstage so they can still play the game. Um, and it's been really freaking cool. Um, who, who's the one with the – oh, it, Taylor's kids have been beating the crap out of it, and I, that was really awesome to hear. I'm 42, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, designing the home pin first was a fun experiment that I think George was very strategic in putting me on that project because it taught me how to uh, make a full-fleshed, functional, fun game with only one core node. Typically, our games have two or three on a cornerstone that you would use. Um, but what it does is it limits how many coils you can use, how many lights you get, and you've got to be really creative with that sort of bomb that you have put in front of you. And um, I also learned a lot just from, like, the internals of Stern and how to work with, like, the engineers and the artists and stuff like that. And uh, honestly, I think this project would have been a hell of a lot harder had I not had that head start with something like that. Um, and understanding, like, you know, it, if I didn't understand the concept of, like, build a materials, I could have absolutely derailed the crap out of this game. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was very helpful. Also, if you haven't played the Jurassic Park home game, you need to go play it. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, we we run everything uh, uh, on the machine itself. We can you know cheat a lot easier. Yeah, we can code the this shot's ready to start the wizard mode. You know, boom. Uh, I, I don't. I, I, the only thing I can say is it it uh, was very difficult um, for everyone involved. Um, it was very difficult for uh, the team, um, you know, because it's sort it's sort of like getting you know a gut punch. Who I mean, no one no one saw that coming. No one expected it. Um, the band, you know, was kind of in a state of what do we do? Uh, so we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, you know, thankfully. After a little while, everybody got together. We all talked um, with management and everything else, and everyone decided, you know, let's go ahead and kind of make it a tribute moving forward. And so we kind of focused our energy that direction, and I think that's sort of what got us through. That's the short of it. Uh, uh, yeah, go for it. After we got done talking, their manager uh, sent us some more images that they would like to sneak into the game, and uh, one of them was Taylor Hawkins' dog, which is a little... Boxer? Pug? I don't think we know his name. But uh, Easter egg, anytime you see the back of the van, I think anytime, I went through all the animations and I made sure. I made his dog into uh, a vinyl decal and I stuck it on the lower back door of the van. So anytime you see the back of the van, that's Taylor Hawkins' dog in a white vinyl. Thank you, everyone. Uh, there's Foo Fighters on the floor to play. You should go play it. Uh, you know, Dwight, hurry up. <laughs>